Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're looking at some additional issues that I've seen brought up in various comments, replies, and requests, but which I haven't already done videos on. Last time, we talked about how there could be happiness in heaven if all you do is worship God, and this time, a topic I saw raised by someone online, how the saints can endure an infinite tomorrow. This person was raising issue with the whole idea of heaven by arguing that certain things about it sound good at first, but ultimately wouldn't make people happy. They said that no matter how pleasant you make it, actual eternal life is forever, and that forever is infinite and would probably be maddening to any regular person, regardless of the circumstances. They then proceeded to give some examples illustrating how true eternity would drive people to the greatest extremes in desperate attempts to escape it, both of them fictional, but both valid conceptually, Tuck Everlasting and Groundhog Day. However, while each example shows the flaws of an eternity lived out on Earth, in an environment that's not meant to be permanent, neither one really challenges the idea of heaven because of one factor missing from each, an all-powerful, all-knowing being who loves them and actively seeks to bring about their happiness. The presence of Almighty God is a pretty big thing to leave out in one's calculations about whether eternal life would be tolerable or not. Angus Tuck's main reason for wanting to die was that he recognized man wasn't meant to spend too long on Earth, and in the book even dreamed of going to heaven, while Phil Connors of Groundhog Day was only suffering because nothing about the day that he kept repeating over and over was perfect, especially himself. Once he made a sincere effort at self-improvement, he became far less miserable about the prospect of living forever, and if there's one thing that getting to heaven involves, it's self-improvement. Still, the argument that eternity is infinite, and that wears on you after a while, is a good one as far as it goes. Doing any one thing forever would probably be too much, because any one thing that we do would still be limited in its scope. However, as infinite as eternal life is, it's still not as infinite as God, whose existence is above and beyond the limits of space and time as we know them, and who never needed to have a beginning. God is infinite, and so are the circumstances, opportunities, and joys that he's capable of providing to human beings. So arguments like, think of the best thing possible, then try to imagine that thing forever, don't really work. However, it's possible to go even further. God's existence is actually infinite, because it always was and always will be. God simply is, in every state of affairs, every possible situation. He is actually infinite. However, eternal life is not actually infinite, but only potentially infinite. What this means is that while the saints could, in theory, continue living indefinitely, there would never come a point where any saint stands up and says, There, now I've lived for an infinite amount of time. Because of this, the infinity in which the angels and saints exist is, in the end, smaller than God's infinity and therefore they will never have the ability to completely exhaust the number of goods that God is able to provide them with. So while some kinds of immortality could indeed be maddening, the eternal life of heaven is just right for human beings, and indeed is what we were designed for. Well, I've definitely enjoyed doing this series, and next time we can start up a new season about the parables of Jesus, starting with the parables of the treasure and the pearl. See you then. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.